Studios Original. Welcome to Web Crawlers. This is our mini mailbag episode where we read your emails, play your voicemails, and read your reviews. Sorry if you can hear my dogs playing in the background. They're fighting. Um, I am Ali Siegel. I am Melissa Stetton. And I'm producer Maria. Let's see. I don't think we have any more reviews from last time, but let's do a quick check We do. Oh my God, what does it say? Sweaty boobs, can never get enough. I'm a professional dog walker. Yeah, I know, woof. So I listen to a lot of podcasts every day. Web crawlers consistently makes me laugh out loud to the point of getting weird looks from dogs I'm walking. But who cares what they think? They can't fucking judge me. I always have a good day when there's a new episode out and I'm always going back to re-listen. Alley rules. La, la, la. <laughs> uh, one out of five stars. It, and it says, one of the hosts has one of the most annoying voices. And I just feel really bad that someone wrote that about Melissa. That's so Look, horrible. Look, I can't help it. It's who I am. <laughs> Sorry. Geez. People really shouldn't talk about Melissa like that. It could be Maria. That's true. Yeah, it's Maria. definitely not me. Then we have one more, right? Uh, from Head Casey. Head Casey. <laughs> Hong Kong for the crawlers. This is my absolute favorite podcast. Allie, Melissa, and producer Maria are hilarious. I laugh out loud during every episode. They're always driving into crazy stories or bringing super interesting guests on for interviews. They can take things seriously, but nothing is off limits for a good joke. I live for Melissa's pronunciation mis- machine. It's Maria's pronunciation machine. Whatever. I don't need the credit. It seriously never gets old for me. You ladies are the best. Wow. Thank, Thank you. you. Should we get into some voicemails? I think we have yes. a ton per usual. Hi, this is for the web crawlers. Hey, y'all, this is um Alexa. I've called y'all a couple times, and I was on the live show Friday, not to brag. Um, <laughs> I was giving y'all a call because I called y'all a few months ago, I think, when, after y'all did the Bethel episode. And I had said, oh, there's like a Bethel church in Austin that I don't think it's related. And, but I did a little investigative reporting, which means I just clicked a few times on their website and they <laughs> are related. And oh. I think it's crazy because the church I'm like involved with here is really, really similar to Bethel. And so many people at my church just like support Bethel and like them as a church. Also, I was looking at their Instagram and they're not requiring um, people wear masks inside anymore oh, at their church, which oh, is insane. The cases in Austin and in Texas in general are ridiculous. I don't really have a very good point to this, except that it's really interesting <laughs> how like so many Christians like don't realize how horrible Bethel is. I don't know if they just like don't see everything that's going on that y'all like pointed out or if they just think it's normal and it like disturbs me because it's like if the leaders like if the people at the church I technically still go to like accept what Bethel is doing as appropriate and okay like what is going on behind the scenes at my church or like how brainwashed are these people to not realize what Bethel is doing doing so i don't know i just thought it was crazy bethel has campuses they have this one in austin there's one in like atlanta and they're like everywhere and they're fairly like widely accepted and like the you know non-denominational christian like contemporary like we're cool christian crowd um <laughs> i don't know i just thought that was like hell song, like, hell song yeah it's easy for us to like look at them and see that they're so like crazy and cult-like but then like it's not as obvious to people who aren't even part of that specific church but are still part of the same religion i don't know i'm just kind of like disturbed right now so yeah i just wanted to give y'all an update (laughs) on that i don't know how like culty the one in austin is but i'm sure it can't be great okay love y'all bye 
Bye. <laughs> Yeah, How man. crazy, man. That's crazy. I feel like a lot of um a lot of churches and stuff turn a blind eye to like a lot of questionable things. And, well, the Hillsong guy, what happened to him? He just got he got fired. Yeah, I guess like there's allegations of him. He's like the mega church guy where all the celebs go. He's the one who is like best friends with Justin Bieber right. and stuff like that. And I think there's allegations of him like cheating on his wife and like doing drugs and things like that. Yeah. Like doing cocaine and railing yeah. lines. Yeah. <laughs> and if you see pictures of him, like he is dressed so crazy. He looks like he, <laughs> he looks, looks like Calvin Harris. Like he looks like a Vegas DJ. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He looks he's a mu- looks like a musician. He has so many tattoos, but like is in shape and like probably Carl skateboard. Lentz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maria, have you seen pictures of this guy? No. He's crazy. Looking. Oh my Can god. Yeah. Yeah, I'll send one to the chat it's, right he's now. Like, he of looks- course he's like a cool pastor. You're going to die. I'm sending it right now. Like he literally he's like he wears fake those fake like serial killer glasses, like the fake aviators with like clear lenses. Oh right. He has that uh alt-right haircut where yeah. it's shaved on the sides. Oh, and- God. Oh, my God. Yeah, he looks like, yeah. Wears, okay. like, tight shirts to show off his biceps. <laughs> yeah, he's tatted everywhere. Yeah. I mean, okay, and so yeah. he was in charge, and he's best friends with Justin Bieber, and yeah. he was in charge of the big Hillsong uh, church, which is um, the, the one that all the celebs go to yeah. in Hollywood. His haircut is is, I can't. The haircut is not. It's the Peaky correct. Blinders haircut. Yeah, well, well <laughs> look at it here. It's like instead of being straight, it appears that it's shaved on the sides, and then you got a perm. Oh, so that the, no, how horrible! The long in the middle is really. Curly. Oh no, it's shaved on the sides, and like it's it's kind of curled over to the side. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. So um, yeah. that's his vibe. Anyway, so that that act eventually <laughs> tanked. I guess the church is still going, but is going to yeah. be under new leadership. Um, but I feel like all these places eventually kind of uh, there's always a, implode a few on themselves. bad eggs that they try to like cover up and then <sighs> you you're telling me sister always, yeah, sometimes I don't I don't trust them I don't trust them okay here's another voicemail we're probably <laughs> what what's happening. <laughs> Is this like a song? Yeah. <laughs> um, thanks, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, I hate it. Maybe if you want to send that in MP3 yeah. form so we can really hear it, but that's very nice. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. I feel like if you play that backwards, some sort of demon oh, will crash through your living room. Yeah. <laughs> this is Web Crawlers is my favorite <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, uh, this is a message for the Web Crawlers. <laughs> um, Uh-oh. This simulation stuff is really freaking me out i <laughs> don't even know how to tell you is this girl so wasted craig said something about deja vu it got me thinking about i i never even connected the idea of deja vu to simulation theory when i was younger I literally had deja vu to the point where I could look at someone and go, you're about to save this thing. And then they said it. And so I'm really freaked out about that. And then also every time you guys talk about simulation theory, my phone just dies. And (laughs) I don't know what that That happens with a lot of people. I don't know. Uh, I think it was Hot Tub Girl. This was like way, way back when she was on uh, one of your mailbag episodes and she was talking about simulation theory and then my phone just kept cutting out and I swear, I swear when I started playing it back again, she was talking about something different and 
I don't know what to do with any of that. Uh, I don't, honestly, I don't know how to live my life anymore. <laughs> um, but anyway, love your show. Thanks for doing it. You thoroughly freaked me out. And good luck. And good night. <laughs> You know, that's like the third caller who said that every time that we, they mention simulation theory, yeah. their phone their phone fritzes. That is really mm-hmm. weird. Hi, messages for web callers. Uh, this is Sid again. I feel like I call too much. I made voice not too much. Anyways, so I'm literally laying in bed listening to a second podcast that you guys had Craig on. And it's one in the morning. Anyways. I thought I'd just call him and kind of like watch out, Maria. Um, <laughs> explain these weird things that kind of just happen to me a lot, and I don't know if they mean anything, but I feel like I'm really in touch with my dreams. And so I have like dreams, like weird dreams of like people that I knew in middle school or high school that I didn't really even talk with. I just like, you know, you knew them. So I have like weird dreams like that, and then I'll wake up the next morning and go on Facebook, and they're like on my recommended friend list. Oh, weird. weird. And then I had just like random dreams. Like my my brother was in one of my dreams. And for some reason, I remember like the shirt that he was wearing. (laughs) And then the next morning, I woke up and I was getting ready for school. And he was wearing the shirt that he was wearing in my dream. Oh, weird. Like I somehow predicted that. That's weird. It's just so weird. And I, anyways, (laughs) those are my weird stories. And these things happen to me a lot. So I don't know. Anyways, I love you guys. I love these little Craig things going on in the podcast. <laughs> they're, going they're, on. they're awesome. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm going to bed now. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> that is weird. That's weird. That's crazy. Everyone's loving Craig's little things. Yeah, seriously. It's Craig's Corner. My name is Caitlin, and I just listened to your most recent episode, and I finally have something to call you about. So around 2013, I was a restaurant management student, and we had to complete an internship for our degree. So we had a career fair going on, and there was a representative from the Bohemian Grove there. <gasps> I remember talking to them, and I was kind of sketched what? out. The internship was only a month long in the summer, and they really stressed the fact that you had to be, you had to work. 10 to 12 hours a day, six days a week. I know it was paid. And at the end of the month, you were part of a huge festival to celebrate like your hard work. I don't remember how much it paid. I think we had to, we were expected to pay for our flight, but they did provide housing. What? I don't know if we had to work at night or not, but I do think now knowing what I know now about the Bohemian Girls, I kind of wish I hadn't taken the opportunity, but oh. yeah, seriously, the idea of dealing with free peeing men and twelve-hour days kind of sounds awful. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for the webcast or podcast. I love it. Boing. <laughs> Interesting. That's crazy. That's crazy. Should have took that job. <laughs> I love that. Like Bohemian Grove set up like a table at a job fair. <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, I guess ever they need people to work there. Okay, next voicemail. Hi, I'm calling for scholars. Um, so I just saw that you posted a video about the Bohemian Grove, and not gonna lie, I totally haven't watched it yet. But I worked there, um, <gasps> so I thought that I come on. Um, actually, you probably have a bunch of lists. Oh no! Oh no! It cuts out. Just that community in Monterey, but like oh, the surrounding out. areas. Basically, if you grow up, like, in Sonoma County, you go to high school with a bunch of people who go spend their summers working the Bohemian Grove. Oh, my God. Because, like, all of their staff is basically college students and high school students. You've got, like, the little, like, 17-year-old bus boys hitting on you between your shifts and buying mangaritas. And then you've got, like, (laughs) go to college kids. And then there's Denise, (laughs) like, the old lady server who, like, rumor has it may or may not have been given, like, hand chase to the guys under the table. We don't know, but um, <laughs> apparently she was like, she traveled with a lot of the members and may or may not have poured, and I guess she's the reason why we weren't allowed to have tips. So, um, yeah, I just want to let you know, um, probably no human sacrifices. They do still burn that effigy. There are protesters on the day where that happens, and they do accuse you of being a prostitute, even though you're wearing your ugly work smock. I was kind of flattered, but not really. Um, 
And, yeah, I don't know, most of the weird stuff that happens there is, like, I mean, it's just, like, a bunch of gay shit, you know? When you walk, like, as you're serving them in the dining circle, like, it's just these, it's just these rich, powerful old men talking about cheating on their wives, mostly with other men, and talking about <gasps> gay sex and gay porn a lot. That's what I noticed most. Um, I can't uh-huh. really tell any more specific stories than that without revealing um, who it is that's violating their NDA on your line right now. Um, uh, what? But, yeah, uh, I guess if you have any, like, sort of general questions, ask them in a in an episode. I can call back. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, and then one more thing. Um, yes, the Bush family does go there every year, but they don't really go in the main dining circle with all of, like, the Fletcher members who, you know, only spend several tens of thousands of dollars to be there. I don't know. Not, not, not bougie. Um, they go to the private grill, and women aren't allowed to work in there. Only men are. Oh. We don't get fiddled. I don't know. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Uh, rock on. Let me know if you have any questions about my fun, like, uh, Illuminati experience. Um, Whoa. And we should ask her like a ton of questions for a follow up or for a Patreon. Yeah. That's crazy. I think she calls in a couple more times to maybe let's see. Oh, oh, yeah, she does. I love that we got a voicemail that was like, mm, yeah, I should have took the job there. Then someone's like, I fucking work there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's play. Here's another one. Yeah. Hi, this is the web callers again. This is round three for me. I just watched your, um, <laughs> your episode on Bohemian Grove, and I took some notes so I could clear up some discrepancies. Oh, okay. Um, the first one is that women can work at night. I mentioned in my last voicemail that we couldn't work in the um, in the like the private grill area, but in the dining circle anyway. Like you did have shifts running until like midnight, and that was completely normal because that's mm. just that was Ooh, when the dinner okay. shift ended. Um, the Oh, I think your friend, you, you mentioned, like, when you guys mentioned some, a woman who said that she'd been a, a guest. Oh, Paisley. Like, oh, Paisley. They let women. I think she's full of shit. Cause, <gasps> um, they, like, at least in the summer, they've only got two different, like, event things. They've got, like, a, an encampment thing, and then they've got the spring jinx. And in neither one of those were there any female guests, at least in that area. Um, as far as, uh, wow, Paisley, you're a liar. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Paisley, oh, she's coming oh, for you. <laughs> right. Uh, the peeing on trees, that's definitely a thing. Like, to get to your shift, they um, they cart you, like, to and from the parking area, like, on and off the mm. property in these, like, little vans. But you could see out the van. And um, one of the places that you passed by, there was, like, a designated peeing on a tree spot. Or, like, maybe there was a sign about peeing oh. on trees. I don't know. There's something I remember. It's the sign that Allie made for a shirt. I don't know if I actually saw any, like, member dick there, though. So, oh, and then the last one. Alex Jones was right about the gay frogs. You guys should look into that. It warrants the episode. <laughs> oh, and then I have one other note. Um, Melissa, I was wondering how often you cut your hair because it looks really cute and chic. And I've been thinking about getting a short haircut like that, but I'm really lazy and I don't know if I want to get my hair cut like every five minutes. So I would just appreciate that. Um, I think that was it. Okay. Thank you. It was a great episode. Bye. Wow. Okay. So I've just got my haircut for the first time in nine months. I highly it recommend great. it. It's incredible. Cut it short. It's great. But how long t- until you get it cut again, do you think? Like, how long is oh, it growing? Oh, I, pr- I mean, I probably won't I mean, go back to quick- a salon in, like, maybe six <laughs> months. A year? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I would like to. I usually try to go, like, every, like, three or four months. Yeah. But it's been a minute over here. That's for sure. Man. That's so she, crazy, man. Yeah. Maybe Paisley was lying. Paisley? Paisley wasn't Paisley lying. Paisley wasn't lying. No, she's full of shit. Paisley, you're full of shit. Is the wording. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Were those all our voicemails? Oh, no. I think we had one more. Uh, hello. This is for the web crawlers. Uh, my name is Vram. And Vram? I have a question. Uh, sorry, not a question, but a story about Bellingham. Bellingham. I once met a guy. He turned out to be a horrible, murdering monster. Uh-oh. <laughs> but when I met him, he was my, well, I met him to... I wanted to fix my car. Huh? <laughs> Is that the whole voicemail? Yes. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let's like um here's an email from Zoya called Seen a Ghost. Hey web crawlers, I'm Grace. So not Zoya, interesting. I love the podcast since day one. We were vacationing in Destin, Florida. We were staying at a hotel. My mom went to get some ice and she saw a girl in all white in the hallway 
that she could see through. She had a double look like anybody and she was gone. My mom just turned around and went back to our room. Thanks again. Love the podcast. (laughs) Whoa. Just a solid ghost sighting. Yeah, that's straight up ghost sighting. Uh, Here's one from Shauna. Darkest murder I've ever heard of. Hello from Canada. Loving the pod. It's my go-to on the long drive to and from work. I've been meaning to email for a while, but always get wrapped up in the episode and totally forget. So I finally hit pause to send this to you now. So I'm not sure how much international attention this story got, but 14 years ago, there was an insane murder in a city called Medicine Hat. Medicine Hat. I wonder if that's a typo. Just two hours north of the border. In a nutshell, a 12-year-old girl... Rec- no, it's a city. Medicine Hat? Yeah, in Alberta. Cool. A 12-year-old girl recruited her 23-year-old boyfriend to murder <gasps> her parents and little brother, basically just so that they could stay together. That f- sounds like a oh, yeah. gypsy... Uh, and even worse, they stabbed them to death. It's a super dark story. I don't want to give away too many details, but the story is crazy and I think it would make a good episode. Maybe I'll do that for my episode. Richardson Family Murders. Huh. Thanks for your entertaining insights. Uh, And then she gave us some sources. The book Runaway Devil. um, And then there's an article. Crazy. Oh my God. 2006. The murders were planned and committed by the family's 12-year-old daughter and her 23-year-old boyfriend. That's like... What is like mommy dearest or mommy dead and mommy? Are you fucking Marie? Uh, are you joking? You did is that what you I said? I said, I said 45 seconds ago, that's like Gypsy, Gypsy Lee. Oh, and I you didn't hear literally you say said, that. you literally said, yeah, it is. And then you- 20 seconds later, you said, that's like mommy dead and dearest. I was thinking of, I thought they Ladies were two gentlemen. different things. There is an ongoing... Wait, but D- Gypsy, is that was that her name? Gypsy Lee? I don't know. It's Gypsy Rose or Gypsy something. It's Gypsy something. Okay, that's but, different from Mommy No, it's Rose not. Dearest. Gypsy Rose Lee was... Yes, Gypsy Rose Lee was an American burlesque entertainer. Okay, no, I get her name wrong. It's Gypsy Rose Blanchard is what I said. But I said, that's like Gypsy. I didn't say Gypsy Lee. I said, that's like Gypsy. The murder of Dee Dee... Bl- oh, right. Okay, I was thinking they were two separate things. No, Gypsy murdered her mom. D- no, it's, it's Gypsy-, Gypsy Rose Blanchard. <laughs> Gypsy Rose Blanchard mar- murdered her mom, and she had an older <laughs> boyfriend, right? Yes, yes. Okay. And But they were pretending that Gypsy was, like, in a wheelchair and, like, right. also, like, six years old, but she was, like, 20. That's crazy. That's a great documentary. Yeah, it is. Well... Um, let's, do, we got one more email that's, yeah, let's do one more email. That's interesting. This is from Laura. Hi, Allie, Melissa, and Maria. Plea. Do an episode <laughs> on Catherine Knight. You would love her. She boiled her husband's head and butchered him and turned his butt into steak that she plated up for his kids. She was the first Australian woman to be sentenced to life imprisonment without parole. What's with all these Australian mysteries? I don't know. Also, I've laughed out loud listening to your podcast while walking my dog through the bush behind my house like an absolute lunatic, and I'm glad to hear other people write in to say they do the same. Honk, honk from Brisbane. Brisbane, Brisbane. Laura. P.S. You pronounce it Ozzy with a hard Z. Melissa's too delicate with the word. Oh, I sang Aussie. 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 PPS, it's Brisbane, not Brisbane. <laughs> or affectionately, Bris Vegas, like Las Vegas. Oh, wow. Brisbane. Bris- Brisbane. Aussie's. Thanks, Aussie's from Brisbane. Aussie is from Brisbane. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's that's it. That's it for our epi- episode. <laughs> wow, that is a ton. <laughs> that's a ton of great episode ideas you guys yeah. handed us off. Um, I am so excited for lunch. It's all I can think about. Um, I am Allie. What am I going to have for lunch? Seagull? I am Melissa. I also worked at Bohemian Grove, Stetton. (laughs) And I'm Maria. I didn't end up working at Bohemian Grove, Blasucci. Producer. Cool. (laughs) Short and sweet. Bye. Bye. Original. Powered by ACAST.